Now all I'm thinking are the words <laughs> gravy shot to the tune of baby shark. Gravy and shot. And it is truly destroying my oh, brain. Oh, you mean gravy shot? shot? Do, are we going to get sued? Do, do, do. From the basement of a pretty normal office building in New York City, it's Shoot Your Shot, Thrillist Boozy Trivia Game Show, with your host, Will Fulton, and special guest, Josh Gondelman. Cheers, and remember to tip your bartender. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Shoot Your Shot. I'm your host, Will Fulton. Today, I'm here with Josh Gondelman, writer, stand-up, author, now working with Jesus and Mero on Showtime. How are you today? I'm great, how yeah. are you? I'm good, I have to ask you something. When was the last time you took a bunch of shots? Ooh, probably about two years ago at a concert. Wait, so you haven't taken a shot in two years? No, 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 that's the last time I took shots. Oh. I've taken a shot. Okay. But it's usually, that's when you're like, glug, night's over, and then I just like leave the bar and get in a cab. Oh, you know what this show's about, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. All right, it's, yeah. it's about taking shots. Absolutely. This shot is called the God with the Wind. Great. It's got your name. <laughs> I know, it's a pun on my name that I haven't heard much, which I like. Gonna ask you a bunch of questions. You get the questions right. I take a shot. Okay. You get them wrong. You I take do. a shot. It's as simple as that. Ready? I am. Same. Let's do it. First question. So I know you grew up in Massachusetts. I did. Great state. I want to ask you a question about Boston. How many people died in the Great Molasses Ooh. Flood of 1919, yep. aka the Boston Molassacre, which is a way better name. Very disrespectful to the dead. It literally been 100 yeah, years. Yeah. I think we're okay uh -huh. here. A, 19, B, 21, C, 33, or D, no one died, it was a cover-up, hot molasses can't melt steel beams. See, this is the thing about these questions, mm. is that they're tailored to me, so it's double embarrassing if I don't know them. I would say quadruples. I'm gonna go with 33, because that's Larry Bird's number. <laughs> that's why he picked it. Yeah. Um, no, it's B, it's 21 people died in a giant 40-foot wave of molasses. Yeah, so do I just do this now? You could, yeah. All right. I recommend not storing them. All right, well, there we go. Did you think it was okay? Yeah. It's not bad, right? No. You are commonly known as the nicest person in showbiz. There's this common mass hole stereotype. Yeah. You grew up in Massachusetts, sure right? Did. How did you buck that and become, by all accounts, a nice guy? I still have some very Massachusetts tendencies. Right. The, the kind of like... Like punching people in the face? Yeah, a lot of punching <laughs> people in the face. But I do it so gentle. I have the posture and density of a croissant. But I still have these like hardened, like when I'm in traffic, it's a lot of like, are you shitting me? And I'm like, oh, I, that's in me. You're just throwing iced coffees from Dunkin' at people. Oh my gosh, I would never waste a Dunkin' iced coffee. <laughs> you are from Massachusetts. Yeah, I drink Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee every day of my life. Get this man a deal. Please, Dunkin' Donuts, uh, give me lots of money. I swear to Christ. And you were a preschool teacher? I taught preschool for four years after college, and wow. I was like an assistant yeah. at early childhood programs before that. I taught elementary school Spanish for two years while I was in college. I was deeply unqualified. Got you up. speak Spanish? I was a Spanish minor, so I knew more than kindergarten students. Amazing. Yeah. Do you have any pre-K friendly jokes? Why didn't the skeleton cross the road? He didn't have the guts. <laughs> and then I, how do you make a tissue dance? You put a little boogie in it. Did you like being a pre-K teacher? I did, I really liked it. It was just like a very encouraging way to spend the day, especially when I knew I was gonna go out and do comedy after. Was it hard to um, work up the motivation to do something you love even with a day job? Because I think a lot of people struggle with that. I really liked it. I, it was like fun for me. It was mm -hmm. where my friend, a lot of my friends were at that time. And by the time also I was teaching, I had already been in comedy long enough that I was like regularly booked. I was just like, okay, cool. This is like another part of my day. That's awesome. My that's mom good. is a pre-K teacher. Oh, that's wonderful. Barney, noted purple dinosaur. Yeah. You know him? Or I mean, not personally. <laughs> okay. Barney was originally meant to be what instead of a purple dinosaur? A, a blanket. B, a Dalmatian. C, an alien. D, a gentle ex-convict with heart of gold. Mm. I'm gonna go with C, an alien. Guess what? It's mm. A, a blanket. No way. I swear. That stinks. My shitty okay. internet research. How, how long was it? Was it like, what if it was a blanket and then they just beat the out of that guy. Like, was that yeah. how long it was yeah, scheduled to be a blanket? Yeah, they held the brainstorm in a town hall and people were just yelling stuff at <laughs> What if it was a blanket? <laughs> what if it was just me? No, it was a blanket, but then Cheryl Leach, the creator, was like, well, that would be too hard. Her kid loved dinosaurs. She put two and two together. Looks. I don't even think it was two and two. I think she put one together <laughs> and was like, this stinks. We're changing it. I refuse to drink this shot. This is a protest shot. There's no way it was seriously considered that Barney would be a blanket. If someone brought that up in a meeting, they'd be like, there's no bad ideas in brainstorming except that one, and you have to go to jail, you weirdo. So this shot is being taken under protest. My bloodstream should know to reject it. Blankets are nice. 
I love a blanket. This next one is called Risk It for the Biscuit. Okay. We have a little cocktail of <laughs> human edible dog okay. treats. Whoever gets the question wrong, this is okay. Instead of a shot, you need to <laughs> try one of these out. You have a very well publicized adoration for your senior pug, Busy. What is a group of pugs called? Like, you know, like oh, a this one I know. Or, do you? Yeah, oh yeah, I can do it without the options. All right, fine. It's a grumble. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Now I have to eat this. Yeah. <laughs> that was a ringer. I know. Doesn't this one look like someone ran over a chicken nugget from McDonald's? It does. <laughs> yeah, I thought it, it looked was. like little dog brass knuckles. <laughs> little dog knuckle tattoos. <laughs> Rough. <laughs> How is it? It's real bad. Yeah, I bet. You That's want a bite? People. No! It's real bad. <laughs> yeah. Question number four. Yeah. I'm asking you about this because I love your Esquire piece about the Tough Mudder. Thank you. So, so I, I yeah. ran a Tough Mudder. Sponsored by Sponsored Wheaties. Sponsored by Wheaties. They truly were like, we usually get the best athletes and try yeah. to inspire people. And we thought we'd try something different. That's insane. It's like Michael Jordan, like Bruce Jenner. Yeah. You. Mm -hmm. okay. So I have a Tough Mudder centric question. Which of the following is a real obstacle on a Tough Mudder course? Okay. A, the Arctic enema. B, the belly flop and slop. C, the twister, or D, the chemical castrator. It's definitely not the last two. Are you sure? Yes, I'm gonna go with A, Arctic enema. Okay. Thank you. All right. The coldest enema you'll ever have, they promise. It's like not a good promise. <laughs> no. Okay. Mm. Question number five. Hot takes or shot takes, we're gonna ask you kind of a tough question All to right. test the limits of your nice guy persona. Hot takes or shot takes. If you don't answer, that's fine, but you have to take a shot. Okay. If you do answer, uh, I have to take a shot. Okay. To commend you. Who is a celebrity you've met where you're just like, ah, oh, man, that person's an asshole, and I wish I never met this person? I'm trying to think if there's anybody that was like, bad, bad, and there, there wasn't. I think all the people that I was like, I, I wish I'd never met you are people that it would just be cruel to say. Like some guy I went to college with. Oh yeah, no, that's, <laughs> I'm talking about someone famous. All right, I'll take the shot. Who's the worst stand-up comic in America? The worst stand-up comic in America? Or, oh. or around the world. I mean, morally worse. Let's go back to Bill Cosby. You're right. Damn. Well played. Thank you. Huh. Okay. Question number six. When John Oliver, your former boss, mm -hmm. was a kid, what did he want to be? A, a professional bass player. B, a professional soccer player. C, the prime minister of the UK. Or D, a veterinarian. It's professional soccer player, but you would say professional football player. You're right. Um, do you have any good behind the scenes stories about John Oliver? Does he rant in real life? Is that just how he is? No, he he's great. Does he walk in a room and just rant? No, he's great. He's very funny and he's a great, nice boss. Early on when I was working for him, he called me uh, G-Unit because of my yeah. last name, Gondelman. Sure. And so I was like, well then I will have a rap name, name for you as well, which will be John Dre 3000. That's much better. Yeah. Than uh, no, no. I think so. Maybe. He assented to it, but I don't know that he was crazy about it. <laughs> Talking about your new bosses. Yeah. Desus and Mero. Jesus. Jesus, what the f is wrong with me? The duo continually insist this baseball player is 100% Dominican, despite not a ton of proof. I know this one too. You know this one? I know this one off top. Do you just want to say it? I can just say it. I think you should. It's Babe Ruth. Yeah. God, this is so sweet. Mm. Okay. My question is, yeah, what exactly do you do there? The writing team kind of yeah. works on the script for the show, like what they're going to see in the prompter. There's like a lot of stuff that necessitates writers. You know, um, it's a lot of like um, bigger picture, making room for Jesus and her to like improvise. Sounds like they don't really need you. Please don't say that. <laughs> You're a camera right now. I really need this. <laughs> All right, so you broke out with the hilarious Seinfeld uh, Today Twitter account. Mm -hmm. Really love it. I want to do a quick segment called, what's the deal with all these shots? So this is rapid fire Seinfeld trivia. The same rules apply. If you can get four answers right in 20 seconds, you win the round. That's so fast. All right, what fast food chicken chain kept Kramer up all night? Kenny Rogers Roasters. Got that right. What is the name of the scotch that, quote, doesn't even make you smell after drinking it? Oh, I don't remember. It starts with an H. Okay, you got it wrong. What color is the bike hanging in Jerry's apartment? Blue. Nope. What's the secret to opening Elaine's vault? I don't know. Oh my god. I, yeah. This What's the name of Poppy's restaurant? It's Poppy's. <laughs> this is the secret about me is that I am like a big enjoyer of Seinfeld, but yeah. I'm not like a completist. So wow. People always are like, hey Seinfeld, do you remember this one? And I'll be like, sure. 
But normally I'm not on camera answering questions with penalties. So this is it's easier. Shocking I know. This is like um, a Charlie Rose interview without the sexual harassment going on backstage. <laughs> well, there's still time. Ooh, that's old. <laughs> Yikes. This is like Manischewitz. Thank you. Not a compliment. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's the like kosher wine. Oh, that, that stuff. Yeah. How would you describe Nice Try? It's personal essays and it's just stories about being kind of a sweet kid yeah. and trying to figure out how to be like a good person. So it's stories about trying and failing to do drugs in a bathroom <laughs> in Williamsburg. What kind of drugs? Well, it was not drugs at all, but we thought it was oh. Uh, Molly. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no spoilers. It's in the book. Okay. Yeah, you gotta read the book. book. So I want to talk about one of the biggest blunders in world history. <laughs> Okay. It's nothing to do with you. You're like, World War II, <laughs> what a goof. In 1788, which country's military drank so much on the eve before battle that they accidentally ended up fighting each other, killing 10,000 of their own troops before any enemy arrived, thus defeating themselves before the war even started? A, France, B, Austria, C, Canada, okay. D, Russia. I wanna say Russia. That's some kind of ingrained prejudice I have. It's not based in any knowledge. I'm not gonna not say it, so okay. Russia. No, it's Austria. Austria, really? Yeah. All right, so this is mine. Yeah. What was the biggest mistake of your life, military or otherwise? And what did you learn from it? When someone was mean to me that mm. I was dating, oh. I was like, great. Oh. That's what it's all like about. A sex thing? Not a sex thing. Oh. That's a different, no, that's a different kettle of fish. Yeah. Just like mean conversationally. Oh, that's not cool. That's not, not sexy. No, not it's sexy. not sexy. No. Like someone would be like, I don't know, I don't, like, I guess we can hang out and I'd be like, whoa, get ready for me to win you over by being too much and annoying and making you like me less. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've been there too. Yeah. And what did and, you learn from that? Well, I, I am a married person and my Congrats. wife- Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. And my wife is lovely and is very nice to me and I like that a lot. Number 10, <laughs> what was the brand name of the penis numbing spray you notably tested out oh, in a 2013 I'll, New York article? Do you know the answer to this I'll one? I'll remember this. It starts with a P. You're right. Yeah. Can I just read through just sure. to do the Sure, I want to hear the fake ones. <laughs> Promiscent, Endorescent, Bromniscent, or No Explode. <laughs> <laughs> it's pro uh, promising. It's promising. Yeah. Last shot. This is that was it. Question ten. We got. We through. did it. Do you still use promising? No. Okay. I barely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is ridiculous. Okay. This is ridiculous. Cheers. Mm. That was it. We got through it. I am. What? It was nothing. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We blazed through these. Would you sign our bar? Yeah. Of course. I will write my name. This was fun. This was fun. We Thank had some you for laughs. Me. We learned a little bit. We did. I cried a little. I don't yeah. think you noticed. Mm -hmm. You saw that. Oh yeah. I thought it was beautiful. I won like one, one tear. down. Yeah, one tear. Like right. um, Sylvester Stallone remembering a friend that died. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. And now buzzed bartending with Will Fulton. And this is how you make today's drink the Gone with the Wind, designed by Reclamation Bar's Garen Ferry. Two ounces of rye or a little more if you're feeling frisky. 0.5 ounces of blueberry liqueur. And five ounces of lemon juice. And 0.25 ounces of simple syrup of your choosing. Shake thoroughly. Thank you for watching Shoot Your Shot. Uh, subscribe to Thrillist YouTube channel, right? Why, why would you Like not? and subscribe. Do if all If you of just that. subscribe, I will find you. And buy his book, Nice Try. Yeah, buy, buy Nice Try. Do that before you even like and subscribe, <laughs> honestly. I'll throw them under the bus in a second for book sales. <laughs>